Well, hello there. How's it going? Tim Warner here conducting an AB100 exam review. I took the exam earlier today in beta or pre-release format. Let me give you my candid NDA-friendly impressions. First, about the certification. The title of the cert and the credential is Microsoft Agentic AI Business Solutions Architect. And there's some important keywords embedded in the cert and exam title. Business solutions, as far as Microsoft appears to be concerned, largely is around the Power Platform, which is expected, but also Dynamics 365, which to me was kind of unexpected. This is an architect certification and exam that's expert level. Remember that there's the 900 series, which are the fundamentals, then there's the associate, and then there's the expert tier. And because the Agentic AI Business Solutions Architect is an expert level cert, that means there's an associate level prerequisite. I've captured your choices. You have to have one of these 11. And as you can see on these screenshots that I pulled from MS Learn, the lion's share of them deal with the Dynamics 365 business suite, which in almost 30 years of experience as a Microsoft professional, I've had very little contact with over the years. I'd be interested to know. Let me know in the comments how you feel about that. But as far as considering those certs as a prerequisite, I wouldn't want to spend the time because it's, in a sense, wasted. I don't use Dynamics in a professional context. The only non-Dynamics prereqs you can choose from, as you can see here, are Power Platform Functional Consultant, Power Platform Dev Associate, or Robotics Process Automation Developer Associate. Here's my candid advice, because I do have a couple of those certs. I would suggest that the one that'll give you the most juice for this Agentic Architect exam is the Power Platform Developer Associate. Because the truth of the matter is, this exam definitely requires that you have a lot of comfortability working in Power Platform. And Power Platform, if you don't know, is a collection of low-code products that allow you to create business data-backed applications like um, Power Apps and Power Automate and that kind of stuff. So the Platform Dev Associate should give you the necessary background in the Microsoft Dataverse and understanding solutions packaging and sharing and environments. That is very critical. You're probably not going to pass this exam unless you have that deep comfortability. So I do think that the inclusion of these Power Platform exams is a prerequisite. Makes a lot of sense. Now, what's metadata about the exam itself? Of course, I'm not going to tell you. Ex of course, I'm not going to tell you exactly what's on the exam. But it is a full-length exam, 120 minutes. That's two hours for approximately 70 questions. You can expect case studies for an architect exam. That's really a foregone conclusion. Lots of different interactive items. I wouldn't worry about labs, performance-based testing, because this is an architect exam. And to Microsoft's credit, they do a pretty good job of asking the questions as if you are an architect working with customers. A lot on design, of course. Solutions gathering, design, planning, proposing solutions. A lot on observability. The pass mark is 700 out of 1,000, just like it is for all Microsoft CERT exams. Now, let me give you some detailed exam notes. Microsoft on this exam is super opinionated about agentic AI development. And I often tell my students that if you ask five IT pros to define what an agentic app solution is, you'll probably get seven or eight descriptions, some of which are mutually exclusive. <laughs> kind of true. So for the purpose of the exam, you have to say you have to stay grounded in the Microsoft specific guidance. You need to understand, even though the ground is really soft and things are changing on the daily, you have to understand at least from the foundational perspective, you've got no code options for doing agentic AI. And that would be like an M365 co-pilot chat. You can create what are basically custom GPT. Not very agentic, but that's the no-code option. The low-code option would be you having a subscription to Copilot Studio in the Power Platform, where you then have access to model context protocol tools. You can call Power Automate Flows. And then the code first option would be in the Azure portal, where you're using what always has been, well, not always, but was called Azure AI Foundry. And now I guess it's called Microsoft Foundry, at least for this week. You need to know those three top-level flows for this exam. 
And you also have to understand a lot about the metrics that you can surface. As an architect, you'll be answering questions like, how can you figure out the degree of happiness that your customers have interacting with your agent? You need to know most of the metrics and reports that you can get out of these various product portals. And that does give me a little bit of concern in the real world because of the churn we're seeing. Frankly, Microsoft is notorious for changing names and they're still doing it. So I worry about MS Learn getting burned and with the exam falling out of consistency with the real world. It's already happened as of this recording today in terms of Microsoft suddenly changing the name from AI Foundry to Microsoft Foundry. Some more notes. As I said, Microsoft is super. Some more notes. You need to know the major Microsoft guidance frameworks. I often say when I'm teaching Azure Architecture, you've got the Cloud Adoption Framework, the Well Architected Framework, and the Azure Architecture Center. When we're doing Agentic AI, Cloud Adoption Framework is absolutely in scope. You want to study up in there on the AI adoption process and the literature on return on AI investment. Second, you want to study the Microsoft AI Center of Excellence literature. Third, you want to study the Power Platform Well-Architected Framework. Again, I think Microsoft deserves credit here because in the past, for many years, they would use these framework websites to power their exams, but they would never mention them by name. I think it's useful that the names of all three of those sites is actually in the public study guide. I'm not revealing what's on the exam because these are listed right on the public AB100 study guide. And you do need to understand their utility and their contents as well as the makers, as well as the major Microsoft guidance, as I said. Surprises? Well, I mean, when you read the AB100 study guide, you see Dynamics 365 all over the place. And I was going into the exam at first thinking, well, maybe they're just going to give lip service to that because after all, you're doing most of your low code work in Copilot Studio. You're doing your code first agent development in Foundry and maybe a little bit of custom GPT stuff with agents in M365 Copilot. But in Copilot Studio, you can publish to Teams, you can publish to Dynamics. Maybe Dynamics is just one channel and they're just meant, no. You need to know enough about how Copilot Studio and even frankly how M365 Copilot works in Dynamics. And if you don't have a baseline familiarity, it could even jeopardize your passing the exam. I would have you focus on the built-in agents in Microsoft Copilot that Microsoft publishes for their various Dynamics 365 apps. I wouldn't say you necessarily need hands-on experience. It's more in your head. You'll want to look at the literature on Copilot and how it interacts with Dynamic 365. As of this recording, by the way, I'm recording this on November 22nd, 2025. There's no official MS Learn self-paced training. That's unfortunate because for the AB900, there's a very rich and robust set of self-paced training that thoroughly covers what's on the exam. Maybe by the time you're watching this review, probably not though. Microsoft Learn will have some published, hopefully though, <laughs> because like I say, they do a pretty good job of aligning their self-paced training to what's actually on the exam content-wise. Like I mentioned a few minutes ago, my chief concern is because whoever it is at Microsoft that thinks it's a good idea to change these names, shame on you. Their product naming churn and how that might affect learners. I mean, the semantic kernel SDK evidently is being done away with in favor of the agent SDK, but don't be surprised if you see references to semantic kernel on your exam. I had already mentioned that Azure AI Foundry is on the exam, but it's been changed to Microsoft Foundry. These things drive me up the wall because especially if you're a technician, you know that when Microsoft integrates some of these names into Azure, into the resource manager, they show up in DNS forever. So you see references to the old cognitive services still, even though they've been named and renamed and re-renamed. Speaking of the cognitive services, you also would do very well to spend time not just with OpenAI service and Foundry in the Azure portal, but you need to understand the basic what's it for the other Azure AI services like content safety, 
computer vision. You definitely, not deep stuff, but you need to be able to identify when you might bring one to bear. Also, how those are surfaced in Power Platform through the connector ecosystem. You want to spend time using Power Automate flows, both with or without agents. As far as model context protocol, you might see a little bit of lip service here or there, but again, to Microsoft's credit, they do a good job of staying on their land. MCP, of course, is vendor neutral, and this is a Microsoft proprietary exam, so they do a great job. 99.9% .9 of the content is going to be all Microsoft intellectual property. Okay. So in closing, make sure that you know your way around Power Platform. You want to light up a trial, especially the Dataverse, which is the Power Platform native cloud-hosted SQL database store. You, you need very much, you need to understand how that works. You need to know your way around the Copilot Studio portal, mostly. To a lesser degree, the Microsoft Foundry portal in Azure, especially honing in on what you can surface in terms of monitoring, reporting, and observability metrics, like I said before. And lastly, I want to remind you that because Microsoft is uncharacteristically opinionated about their agentic AI stuff, you want to stay close to, at least for the purpose of the exam, the Microsoft messaging on agentic AI planning, architecture, delivery and updates. Okay, very final thing, and then we'll call this quits, exam prep. I like to align things according to theory, practice, and review. For theory, when it's available, the free MS Learn self-guided training will be nice. But for now, what I'd recommend you do is take the study guide, the public study guide for AB100, maybe throw it into an LLM and say, give me a keyword list that I can throw into MS Docs and just hunt the docs and the cloud adoption framework and the center of excellence and the power platform form WAF for the keywords that are on the exam. That's about the best we can do for theory right now. For practice, your best bet is to get a trial going for Power Platform, for Copilot Studio, and Azure so you can kick the tires. Again, that's really critical. Although this is an architecture exam, I don't imagine you'll pass if you haven't seen some of the observability reports and that kind of stuff. For practice tests, measure up. I'm sure we'll have a product out there eventually, but because we're in early days, as of this recording the exam is in pre-release beta format you can either wait or chances are a company or a competitor like Udemy will be first to market but I do want to say be careful about Udemy because historically they're terrible about vetting content that's uploaded whether it's a brain dump or a legitimate practice test you want to do your due diligence and make sure we're staying green on all that okay well I kind of yammered on for a while I hope that you're in a better position now regarding your AB 100 study I wish you all the best in your preparation. I look forward to seeing you again at another tutorial. Bye.